So I found natural parenting or attachment parenting. And it was awesome because they believe whole foods are the best. You can carry your baby close. You can put your baby to sleep next to you, not in another room. I thought, oh, that's so cool. I can carry him, keep him with me. And so uh, we did that and I could really watch his symptoms. Uh, there is something called babe Dunstan baby language. And there are five sounds your baby makes. And two, I already figured out myself and three, I needed the, the video for. And you know, if he has to eat, poop, or thirsty or sleep that was the other one i have uh, pain so it's like wow i'm talking to my baby it's like he tells me what to do and so we did uh um how not potty training um in dutch it's called baby on the potty <laughs> yeah so actually I did that and when because he had so much clear talk and so much when you say when he has pain in his tummy for me it was so clear especially when we started solids I know when he need to poop so I just put him above the toilet or in the potty and so I could always see what come out and never use any diaper so we were very lucky he only pee in the diaper at night and during the day and when he need to poop I put him on the toilet so I didn't have to clean a lot of uh, it was very good <laughs> um, so we tried um, we did all that and because of that I could see you know if he's digesting his food and I went to the consultation every Monday or every other Monday so oh, he's still not digesting he's still and they keep confirming when do you do good you do good and I'm at the same time on Google, reading these books, for struggling with my own house, not sleeping. I was completely sleep deprived of my baby belly pain every time I gave him something else than banana. So I found out like corn, corn is the worst. A lot of pain comes out complete no need to put it in here because it'll come out like that it's not very useful it only cause pain and energy for the baby so my mom and my parents-in-law want him to try gluten but i am gluten almost gluten free for like since i got the shot in 2012 so at this time it's like halfway 2013 he was born and when he's one it's 2014 I still don't want to eat gluten so he they, they, they give him gluten oh my three days of hell try to calm a crying baby with you know that there's something inside and you cannot take it out it's just a mother's hell that you cannot calm your baby the only thing work is put him on your back and walk 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 and at some point even that didn't help anymore so i was um i had a little problem <laughs> i was so sleep deprived hungry in pain i had pelvic instability i still had chronic inflammations the whole list you saw in the vaccine talk i was still fuzzy half of the time i couldn't concentrate i could only read one quarter of a page of a book because if i go to the next i completely forgot what was on the top so i had notebooks full of things because i wanted to remember <laughs> anyway you can see the state we were in hey kian i need you so you you can imagine a little bit the state we're in i am list like that's why i sit down now I am like feeling my intestines falling out. I am not sleeping. My baby is in pain. He can only calm down if I walk. Can you imagine? A walking was possible because the baby wrap, you can tie your hips together like that and you have less pain. I couldn't even go shopping because if you have to push the, the cart, I couldn't even push the, the baby thing 
because it, if it goes a little bit like that on the side way, it twists your hip and it hurts so much. And they told me, Wendy, if you, if you continue to do that, you will end up in a wheelchair. You shouldn't do that. You, what do I do? Sit at home then. Okay, okay, can I not go shopping? I go, I look pretty thin, I look the same, like. And I have to ask the lady in the store if she wants to please put my groceries in the car. That's really, that was humiliating. That was, I felt so, I don't know, bad. Like, you know, like something's wrong with me, like shame. And I was trying to just focus on good things, focus on happy, focus on, I have my baby, I'm good, I'm, you know, I still have income, I have a partner, a house, it's good. But at the same time, I had all this pain and he has all these problems. So I have to do something about that. And at one point, I, he, um, he needed to have a clean diaper because he, I saw he needed to go. So he peed in the diaper and I take out the diaper and I put him above the potty and he puts you know, poop in the potty. I'm, I'm super proud of myself, he poops in the potty. But yeah, he was, I don't know, 10 months or something like that, maybe a little bit more. And I'm just so exhausted. I am just, I'm so exhausted. And I cannot go up and down the stairs. I can only go up once, sleep, go down the next day because it hurts my pelvic. And I left him on the carpet in the living room. I just, I just break. I cry, I cry. I sit on the bottom of the stairs. Like, what do I do? If I go up, I'm in pain. They say, if I do it, I end up in a wheelchair. It hurts so much, I'm so tired and he, he needs me. He's in the living room, I need a diaper. I forgot to bring diapers down today. What do I do? Well, I call my, my, my boyfriend at work, what's that gonna help? Well, the neighbor's not at home. Should I ask the neighbor to get the diapers? I just, no, that would be too humiliating. So, um, at the bottom of the stairs, I made the most important decision in my life until now. And this is the most important decision for me and Keon, and it has been. I took the decision, and it is strong and solid. I will do whatever it takes to figure out what caused this problem, and I will fix it. I said to myself, even if it takes until I'm 80 years old, I don't care. I will fix it. This is not working. This is not life. I fix it. And it became sort of my motto. It became my life motto. So, okay, I breathe. I crawled on hand on feet up the stairs. I got the diaper. I went shitting on my bum down the stairs i thought okay i solved the not walking i did that gave him his diaper and i started finishing my school my studies the politics i was still in but i was just in unofficial sick leave half of the time i just sat at the <laughs> at the, <laughs> the desk just being uh, being or uh, being there its presence is very important <laughs> And then the, sometimes I read from the notes they gave me, so I was there. But um, I started and I dived deep into this, more of what I learned on the vaccine and this uh, connective tissues. And uh, I Google, I Google, I heard about detox and I didn't get it. I don't understand it. And I thought, well, maybe this detox is something good. It's supposed to do what? get toxins out why isn't it working every day so I ask myself all these questions and so I'm thinking wait this baby diet that Keon is having is working just fine so secretly I put him on raw vegan right but nobody knows every now and then rice waffle okay at the kindergarten thingy they gave him some fake chicken filet round thing two <laughs> times but okay I they told me after he ate it so okay it's okay two nights of hell will be fine 
will be over after three days. But actually, secretly, I put my child on fruits and veggies only. <sighs> and I was still on sort of paleo, which is not the paleo you read about, but it's Bendy paleo. It's primal diet that I found was good. And that is foods that have the most uh, energy from the sun, from the soil, grown outdoors, organically. And I believe that if nature intended like that, if grow it like that, uh, the creator source of everything made it like that, why would I destroy it? So, I, f I think that that's my belief for years. What am I doing? Eating animals because people say eat, like I don't even want to cook it anymore. Why do I do that? And I'm like, if this is my belief, I believe it so strongly. I should just do it. So I did it secretly on Kion. So I, I dare to admit it now. I called it, so I tell people, <laughs> no, no, he can only eat banana and fruits and vegetables. No purees, no jars, no nothing. Just that. And uh, he was doing great. But... Um, I thought, oh, maybe I should do it. And then all the warning signs go off. Mm. I had some friends who did a detox and it says specifically not for pregnant women or breastfeeding mothers. <laughs> so the year go by and I'm like, okay. So I'm basically living on three meals a day of um, a lots of vegetables, vegetables, vegetables. And in the afternoon, lots of fruit. And then two times a week for dinner, we still had some either fish or some meat. And I would only take fish from the sea or meat from the place where I knew that they were having animals that were sort of not industrial okay-ish. And the reason for that was because I tried vegetarian before in my life two times and I was... Um, I was craving raw meat. I know it's crazy, but after two weeks, I was just ready to eat anything animal like that. I just decided to go to the store and buy something because that's not good. And later I found out that when I was pregnant, they did a test on me and they said, I didn't make this intrinsic factor and my B12 was so low and that's why I was anemic for years. And then my I was on B12 supplements at this time. I was a lot of supplements that I just did. I don't believe in them, but there, I don't see, an, I didn't see another way. They were keeping me sort of alive. So some sort of energy. So it was on B12 um, melting tablets. Uh, and um, well, Turns out that if you have very short of B12 and you've always been eating meat, that you crave meat because you think it's in there. And later I did a 78 day juice fast and loads of worms came out of me. And after that, I never craved any meat or fish raw anymore. It's very relieving. So just a side note. <laughs> I think the worms were eating all the fish, all the raw fish and stuff. So um, yeah, raw fish, yeah. Okay, so we went raw. Uh, I ate herring and salmon and tuna. I know I shouldn't eat tuna, so I never, like, just, like, you know, like one little half a centimeter slice. I don't know, I just needed to have it. It was crazy. So back to this phase after I know about detox and I believe in raw food. So I sort of have him on fruits and vegetables. So the vegetables, at, especially at parents' place, are still steamed. Um, but for the rest, he's doing great. He's doing better. He, Yay. he's doing, he's doing just like that. No more belly pain. And um, I decided that I need to do one of these detox because even though my friends say never for breastfeeding mothers, even though the books say never for breastfeeding mothers, all these people that sell juice fast and say, say always do it supervised. I'm like, I don't know anybody to supervise. 
I don't know. I, I need the solution now, not next year. I'm already waiting months, months. I, I need something. I, um, so I researched that I need reserve patrol and I need, oh, I don't even remember the rest of the names. Okay, a lot of these nutrients. So I was on a grape with grape seed, raspberry seed, cumin seed, concentrated supplement was helping me. And I learned that if I use that, that I don't need so much of these B12 tablets. So I, I have a testing thing, so I can test myself a lot. And I went to loads of therapies and to the doctor and I got tests everywhere to figure out what's wrong with me. Yeah? So that's how I know. So slowly I could, could reduce this B12. So just take a quarter every two weeks. I feel the difference. If I didn't take it, I got tired again, like super tired. And then um, I thought, okay, I'm going to do this detox. I'm just going to try it. I'm, I don't, I just have to have the courage. I don't listen to my parents. Don't listen to all these people saying I have to do it. So I decided in the fall of 2015, I have to go on a raw vegan detox, not knowing that it's called raw vegan. And I practiced on my child, right? Kion, I need you now. I need Kion because this part is his part. Uh -huh. mm. Mm. He's coming. He's coming. Mm. And yeah, I can give coming. you a break to move. With another melon. He's coming. I need you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. You have to tell about picking on the eye. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you're, you're right, it's so difficult. It's so difficult. So I'm going in, in, in detox, right? So I grab my courage, don't tell too many people. I'm gonna go liquid smoothies and soups. Not even raw, eh? Smoothies and soups. It's winter, so pumpkin carrot soup, pumpkin carrot paprika soup and um, smoothies with berries, lots of berries and blueberries and grapes and, and green juices. Oh, and now I think crazy combinations, but back then it was really scary to not eat and just be liquid. Now, Kion, tell me, what happened when mommy did the three weeks? Come back to know. Yeah, you know. So he's two, two years old, he's with me, I'm deciding to do that and three weeks in, I wanted to start January 1st but I started on the 30th of December because uh, I couldn't wait <laughs> and in the detox it says don't eat milk, okay easy, don't eat coffee, I don't, I don't do coffee, so I had very easy and the first week was just uh, built off from regular but I was not a regular anymore so first week was easy but then the two weeks after I just stayed on liquid and uh, in this I thought after the second week I thought wow it's amazing I feel good I have energy I my brain works sort of at least it works better like finally this brain fog goes away finally I can see and feel my body wow uh so I go searching crazy on Google and YouTube trying to find somebody who lives on fruits and veggies only because I need some help because I want just to eat fruits and vegetables. I don't want anything else anymore. And I don't know if I'll die or not or I get problems with the police from the consultation office because my child doesn't eat bread or meat. They do that, huh? They do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they send you to the hospital and stuff. Okay, so... Uh, I click and I want to click on, I was also researching living in a van, so I came to Brittany Taylor and Brittany Taylor, I didn't know at the time, was a fruitarian, raw vegan, I didn't know that. So YouTube matched it together, I didn't know. And there was this eye on the YouTube, you want to say about the eye? But I, I was sitting with my mom. Uh, go, go there Come and here and talk mom. that way. So. Okay. I, I, was to, I, I was just sitting with my mom. And, and, and my mom said, don't click the eye, okay? She wants to take a tea, 
she come back, I click on that. <laughs> and that comes Dr. Uh, something. Morse. Morse. On the screen. And we're like, I went, what is it? Mm, yeah, I went away. And she looked it. And then, and then, yeah. Two days later, we were, yeah, healthy. We were healthy? Yeah. We were raw vegans. Yeah. Raw vegan fruitarians. Mm -hmm. So basically, I'm doing that with the mouse. Go away, Kian. Kian, stop touching the mouse. Oh, okay. I go get the tea. So I come back. I come back. I see this guy, Robert Morris, talking. Look, this is an eye photo of a lady. I think she was somewhere in the 50, 50 years old. And she has lung cancer, blah, blah, blah. You see in her eye, the lymphatic system and blah, blah. She went on two months of grape fast. I think two months of grapes, just like that. And now look, here's a photo of the cancer before. Here's the photo of the cancer after. Look, here's a photo of her eye after. I look. Oh, wow. Okay, so I can eat grapes for two months and I will not die. <laughs> awesome. If it helps with cancer, it cannot do any harm to me, right? I mean, I'm, I'm already so bad and it's proof you can live on fruit. And I listened to him and it made sense because somewhere in 2003, I did... Um, uh, just a one day mini course of iridology and what he says was like oh yeah I totally forgot yeah that's right you can see the lymphatic system in your eye and deficiencies and problems are visible in your eye oh yeah and he talks about these ingredients of grapes and why they help the lady they were the ingredients that I researched that I need which made me buy the supplement which was helping me so I thought oh I need to clean my sink i need to plug the plug out of my 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 dishwash water drain the dirty dishwash water put clean water in that was what i was thinking because it's about removing all the junk you're eating it's not about adding the supplement the supplement is working but i'm still eating cooked rubbish food right well i was thinking i was doing really good but looking at that it's really better so Oh, so the quarter do click. And I was going, cool. So I listened to the rest of the two and a half hour long video. He says, grapes, berries, and melons. Awesome, it's May. I love watermelon. So I go to the store, I buy myself a watermelon, <laughs> put it on the table. I made some nice slices. I didn't know to spoon it like slices. I put the other half away. So, and my dad come, 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 come home and then, what that? We're eating melon from, for breakfast. A uh, dinner, dinner. A uh, dinner. Uh, <laughs> you should have seen his face. <laughs> and he said, we're doing what? He said, yeah, um, so I'm eating melon now. <laughs> the whole thing. So, yeah, you know that my mom always said you can have one of these slices, right? That after dinner, you can have one slice. I said, you know what? I found somebody who says you can eat all the melon you want and you don't die. It's even better. You get healthier. So I'm like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'm eating the melon, thank you. So I'm just sitting there, super excited, super happy that I can eat the whole melon. You understand? Like I'm like this eight-year-old kid, melon, melon, melon. Okay. So that's it. I eat the melon and uh, yeah, I went for Terry and Sons. And uh, I can tell you six weeks later, he sleeps the whole night from 11 to 8. Yeah. I sleep from 11 to 8. I wake up, I'm rested. I enjoy my meals. I don't have any digestive problems. He doesn't have any problems. And I this do. pelvic thing which woke me up for pain all the time. I don't know. It didn't woke me up anymore. And slowly I walked the stairs. I walked more stairs. 
I start walking, I start running. We go on the holiday to England and uh, I sleep in a tent on a tiny mat. I'm like, yes, I can go on holiday. And then I can go biking and we go on a biking trip two weeks in the pouring rain with him on the back, tent, and me eating my healthy food on the road, making myself, and I bike two weeks. Every day, 50 to 70 kilometers. It works, I'm like, yes, thank you, thank you. Okay, I don't know, the rest of my life I will tell people about this fruitarian thing because it's really awesome, it helps everything, and I'm just gonna spread the word that we need it, so that's it. There I am. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so, and this kid has been a uh, fruitarian since he was two and a half. Wow. And, uh, yeah. That's amazing. Now, yeah. Now uh, something. But did we let him try some other food now when people propose it to, you know, yeah. not be completely... Uh, Which food? Huh? Which food then? Um, so, he's had now, what do you have? Popcorn, crisps, and fries. And chocolate. Yeah, but chocolate's still raw, vegan, and no sugar, so it's sort of, yeah, yeah. And what is your favorite food? No. Fruit? Yeah, or fruit, food. Just food. Mm -hmm. Okay, just mm, not white. Uh, mango, melon, banana. Mango, oh, like I do, also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's a kind of a workshop. So if anybody wants to ask or share a story, you can. You, should, you should write a small book on that. Just you know, fifty pages. Only this part. <laughs> what you said is a, what took an hour. I don't know. What is the time? Half an hour. I think thirty minutes. I hope. Yeah, half an hour. Thirty minutes. Yeah, thirty minutes might make. Um, Forty-five uh, minutes. minutes. 20 pages, so if you put a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I would like to, I would like to share some other things if nobody wants to ask questions. If you think it's, a, if you think it's helpful. Uh, yeah. Because I heard that some people, how's Helder, you were interested in how to raise the kid vegan or raw vegan. And Maybe if you get pregnant, what you need to do, right? And so also how to explain school. School. How children can be raised and learn to be different in a positive way. Yeah. Without being uh, ostracized mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah, yeah. And that's important, maybe. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll sh I sh told you that we're following this attachment parenting, natural parenting. Uh, gr group, group, group thing. Um, I, I really feel I was drawn to that. I didn't know it had a name until I read a book <laughs> that it had those names. And it, it shows that every human is born with an intrinsic, um, ah, how is it in English? Power? What is it? Interest? It's an intrinsic motivation. Mm -hmm. So it's the intrinsic motivation. It, it assumes that when you come to the earth, you want to explore, you want to grow, you want, you're curious, a natural curiosity. I believe that, so naturally it fit me. Uh, when the earth was created, there were no cribs, so I believe we should hold our baby in our arms, right? So this intrinsic motivation is something that's really important for me to, to value in the child. I believe the child has a soul like me and it should be nour nourished and valued and that a child can have his own will. Even though it's a kind of will that's not really good for him or her, we are there to guide them, not to punish them and put them down and say them exactly what to do all the time. Yes, yeah, sometimes it's necessary for safety or for learning purposes, but most of the time try to let the child do what he, what he 
what he wants. And because you keep your baby there and give it the five needs it needs from the moment it's born, it needs safety, it needs the mother and the father, it needs the presence, it needs to be able to have emotions and with the mother it um, gets a safe attachment inside so it feels confident that wherever it goes it knows the mother will take care of him and you want to give this child the belief that the mother will always take care of him and you do that by letting them choose whatever it is until they need you and that's what we did and I think my child is very self uh, assured, independent, confident person because of that. <laughs> he kind of walks away all the time and he's not afraid. And I think that is because um, I try to be there when he needs me and other time he can have his intrinsic motivation intact. So, so we explain a lot to him. We explain him what we believe, but it doesn't mean that other people believe the same. We explain him that I think this and this is good, but children in school or other people think something else is good. And I do that a lot. And people say, you can't, even Eric, you cannot have such an adult conversation with your child. I say, why not? What if he understands? What if, it, if he's understanding it, why not? Right? I remember being eight. I remember people. Yeah, I remember a lot of stuff. And here he's eight now, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, are you doing homeschooling with him or, or, or he's going to a normal school? He's not going school? to any normal school because mm -hmm. we've been traveling for four years by almost. Mm -hmm. Nice. And um, the grandparents push on the reading in the evening and the calculating but um, I see that if you push on it, the more you push, the less he wants. So I just let him free. And now I've had, had him free for almost two weeks. And now all of a sudden in the evening, he comes, oh, I want to do the book. And then yesterday, everybody wanted to go to sleep. And he's like, ah, it's just OK, let him do. Apparently, it's his time. So now he com it comes back. So. I notice when you push him to do something and he doesn't want, he doesn't want it for a long time. And then you let it go, you let it go. And after some time, this motivation come back and he's super interested. And mm -hmm. he's only six months behind regular kids and he should be in group four, so the fourth. Mm -hmm. I don't do anything. <laughs> he's only six months behind, I don't do anything. I, and you know, he speaks like four languages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. well, I think it's working until now. <laughs> His daughter didn't go to a regular school and she asked to go to Tessa. She asked to go to school last year, last year and she skipped, uh, she did group seven and eight all in one and is now going to secondary school uh, in September when they come back next week. So apparently it works. And there are so many children that from Sudbury Valley, for example, that's very documented school. Mm -hmm. They track all the children for the last 20 years, and yeah. Okay. So that's what we follow, and it seems to be working. Yeah. Uh, I also read, I don't remember where, but uh, that, uh, I don't know the percentage, but the high percentage of the students that go to Oxford come from homeschooling, or some kind of democratic school, or not traditional school. Yeah. And they are the one that succeed success the most. Yeah, they are also the ones that they usually want start their learn. own business and yeah, the yeah. So that's in line with that. Um, what was the other question? <laughs> I don't remember. What was the other question? You said uh, yeah. You said yeah. Uh, Sylvan, uh, he was asking about. Uh, if he feels alone or something like that or uh. with other children that um. think different or <laughs> it was uh, how it can uh, in school uh, when he's in the school how can he yeah so he <coughs> went to school and he was this time he this time he was not becoming he was not very happy he thought kids were bullying him because mm -hmm. he asked every day why he only eat fruit 
And he says, no, because I like it, because it's like that, because we're fraternian. And apparently that's not a good enough answer. So mm. I can understand that if kids ask every day over and over and over, it's mm. super annoying. Mm. Um, I think it also has to do with us divorcing now and the stress within all of that, that is making Keon a little bit uh, less powerful in that. But he's also asking like very smart questions that that's the other kids thinking. So, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I cannot say a lot more about that. Mm -hmm. mm. And but in the Netherlands, it's allowed to. We we were not in the Netherlands. Okay, okay, you are in Spain, right? N no, no, traveling. nowhere. Traveling, <laughs> and so it's okay. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, if you deregister from your country, yeah. I move to another country. Which country? Belgium. <laughs> Nobody cares. Okay. Because nice. you're not in a list. Mm -hmm. You don't yeah. pop up in the list of children not going to school because you're not in any list. <laughs> cool. Yeah, nice. So you have to do that for a whole year. Then you come back to the Netherlands and then you can write a letter that you have a holistic uh, religion, blah, blah, blah. It's Article 5A. Mm -hmm. And it says that um, if there is absolutely no school in your religion within a parameter of like five kilometers and you do not have the finances to move, you can um, keep your child at home for this school year. And uh, so all the people who do not agree with normal school and there's no other one, they just write this letter and I was in politics, and it means that they made the rule. If you write the letter like that, this law applies, so they must give you permission to keep the child at home. Okay, it's not a homeschool. You, homeschooling is illegal. It's also a law. It says homeschooling mm -hmm. is illegal. But there's also a law saying that every child has a right to visit the school of his or her religion so if you have and then it states three religions of which one is holistic and there's no holistic school in the netherlands so everybody does that and then the kids stay at home uh, <laughs> it's called the loophole in the law <laughs> <laughs> and since i'm a holistic therapist it makes sense right yeah yeah i'm a holistic therapist so i believe in that so yeah um, so, um, yeah, I was supposed to say something about pregnancy and um, kids and raw food. And I believe and I'm 100% convinced that you can live on raw food and get pregnant and be healthy the whole world. Because I had to convince myself for nine months to a year to start this detox while breastfeeding. I had to research even more to figure out if it was safe or not. And I found out that there are so many opinions and so little research and so many good and, and anecdotes and other mothers raising children raw, being pregnant. I have by now so many raw vegan friends all got pregnant. Some have five, six kids all got pregnant, all kids are raw, everybody's doing fine. And um, yeah, if you have a child raising raw vegan, you want to have other mothers raising children raw vegan. So uh, I can say it's totally safe. What you should watch is your calorie intake. <laughs> so when you get pregnant, it's really a trap to not eat enough. I would do the tests to get check your blood work so get your blood work three times just do it see how is your iron how's your b12 and all that and um in this case i would recommend people adding herbs not the ones that give you like they're bad for the baby of course but adding a lot of herbs like natural herbs and plants and juice them uh, because most people going raw just did it just now. They're not completely healthy. So if you want to give your baby the best nutrition and keep some for yourself, make sure you get enough. And leafy greens are uh, essential. So in herbs, in plants, leafy greens. So that's, that's a recommendation I can give. And if you have any deficiency or any other issue, I really, um, yeah, you should really uh, see 
like a natural therapist like myself that can help you with like maybe like powders concentrated powders i use a lot of raw berry powder and i do that because you can eat what you normally eat juice what you juice for the leafy greens so you don't have so much fiber but more nutrients and then you add some powder to a smoothie or something or you throw it over your fruit salad fruit and then you get more of these nutrients um, of course if some organ is not working or your hormonals are disbalanced or something like that you need to address that but even with certain movements that I teach in the gym certain stretches they they help um, the nervous system balance better and with balancing better the nervous system it's better in sending the right signals to the right organs to do what they're supposed to do so there are a lot of things you can do besides going to the doctor or going to eat like a standard diet or get very very unhealthy supplements doctors give to pregnant women so that, that I think that summarizes it. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, so I recommend Thai coconuts a lot. So just in case any of you starts to have a baby soon, Thai coconuts. Just drink it, eat it, drink it, eat it. If you have a baby has problems, you want to start them eating is coconut water. Yeah. Even if it's a little baby, coconut water is. It's the OSF of the raw food and... I will go to Brazil and visit Eduardo and my family and so... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so coconut water, uh, if you cannot breastfeed, I, I would really recommend breastfeeding. Like it's really, I think it's a must. Uh, if you cannot do that, especially in the first three months, ask another mother that's on a raw vegan diet that's super healthy or something and then otherwise ask a mother that's on a vegan diet just and otherwise just ask another mother because it's absolutely necessary for the child to get this first breast milk and otherwise there are very uh, good plant-based options to help your baby with all include Thai coconut so, yeah, no, you don't agree? No, no, I didn't understand. Uh, they include what? Coconut. Thai coconut. Thai coconut, you know? <laughs> Not these hard white, with the hard white, Green. but the ones you can drink, yeah. the drinking yeah. coconut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and I would just have to send you to Dr. Robert Morse. He helped a lot of babies uh, that could not have breast milk and have problem transitioning and all of that. But yeah, I went through it with Kian and I didn't use coconut because I didn't know where to buy them. But we, we did great eventually just on fruit and then after fruits and veggies. So and just keep on the soft soft fruits in the beginning and not the citrus, not the kiwi, not the melon with the high histamine. If your child has inflammation, you do not want to add histamine. You want to reduce histamine, so Kion gave the Dacen's Pearl, he went to a homeopath, we did a lot of foot massages, I have sage essential oil, it calms everybody down, so also babies in stress, and um, yeah, that's very good things, that's very good things. I have a very nice paper with what herbs are good during pregnancy and which absolutely to avoid and which... Um, place I have a very nice protocol for women that want to have the baby come and it's not coming it includes teas eating herbs also certain massages and pressure points on on the body that stimulate the uterus so yeah if there is anything like that and you feel ah, just think Wendy I'm f I mean I will I would, wouldn't mind sharing anything if it goes too far and you know, say, I'll say you need a consultation, but like, um, yeah, what I can share, I will share because I think it's super valuable. Uh, and uh, I can promise you, even though I was not raw vegan, Kion is born in our house, in the bath, 
and it was blue like I always imagined. I knew he was upside down. I didn't tell anybody because uh, since the vaccine, I do not do hospitals. And I was like, do, do that. Yeah. I wait. Which herbs do you recommend? And actually, the. This is listed in, in your documents that you talked about. Okay, yeah, well, it's, it's uh, 42, 42. It's a list of 42. So I, I don't know all 42 out the top of my head and what exactly they do at this moment since it's been eight years in this time. I don't speak about it a lot. Um, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's what I said. I said I, 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 that's what I said. Like, um, like I showed you my email. You can just do that, or I can just give you. I uh, just take your email down in my phone. I'll just make a little list every time after food fest. I have to send people lots of stuff, so I always do that. No, no mind. Yeah. Also. So, so Oh no, we're traveling for four years. I don't have it. The car is full, <laughs> but but not of that. The most is on the hard drive. So I can have a look. If you have an iPhone, I can flip it over. <laughs> but she was asking specific what you yeah. used for herbs, like yeah. kind of um, uh, drop. No, like you made a special mixture which you put on over the food she was asking. Oh, the raw berry powder. Yes, exactly. Oh, that's just three brands that I buy. That's just three uh, that you could just buy like that. I don't make it. Uh, but it was like made of uh, Oh, that. Well, I don't recommend that anymore unless you're for raw vegan people. Because it's got a lot of um, grape seed in it and that's super oily so i don't re recommend it to a lot of raw vegan people but if you're eating other foods and you're not in your normal life you're not raw vegan then i can recommend it, it really helps bringing oxygen in your cells and uh, it reduces inflammations in 20 minutes just like that so it was it was the it was the grape grape seeds grape seed uh, raspberry, raspberry seeds, seeds and black cumin and black um, cumin and nowadays they put something in uh, cumin. can you repeat something and um cumin black cumin and, um, just uh, now they put something in um like raw cane juice Huh? Yeah, for sugar. Now it's super sugary. Yeah. So they put in raw cane juice. It's okay. Yeah. Raw sugar cane juice. Huh? Super healthy. Yeah. So they put all that in. And that before it was not so sugary, but now it's like extremely sweet. But it's okay if you if if somebody is in a real need of something and you don't want to go to the doctor you know and you cannot do a fast or anything and it's really terrible just take it it's not that bad it's way better than antibiotics or anything in the like that so uh, yeah it's called uh it's from rain soul rain i think do we have one of these cards of me like cards of you yeah like business cards i mm. think we bring some maybe it's on the back on the oh, back. I will make sure you get one, Matilda. Is, is this a, a, a is? Is that liquid? Yeah. Yeah, it's liquid with seed pieces in. <laughs> it's really thick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Sie haben mit dem Vitamin B12 mal gesprochen. 
Yeah, it's about to be 12. The problems, how, how do you solve it? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, my problems just went away. I don't use any B12 anymore since that key. I was uh, in the summer of 2016, but I've been using B12 um, since my wit bike told me in 2012. Mm -hmm. So from 2012 to uh, about 2016, uh, am I correct? Yeah. Yeah, and then 2016 in the summer, I quit, and my blood works good. Do you ever want to start again, supplementing B12, or is it like no, I don't see no. Use it up in your life. Or something? Yeah, that I don't really. That would be a very interesting discussion to have together with Eduardo. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because. I don't see the problem. You know, B12, it's basically bacteria that live in the soil. Mm -hmm. And I love gardening. And I love growing my own food. And I think that the food from stores, even markets, is um, treated. Too, too the soil is, they in, it's pain. They inject, they, they clean the ground, they inject Still stuff, in. then they, they yeah. uh, pull it over, and then uh, they put seeds in. It's crazy. They put dire killing things in the ground before the seeds. So I think we're just lacking these bacteria. Uh, then I think in my case, my mucosa was so bad. I kind of, not everything, because my mu mucosa of my stomach is still bad if I do my test, but it's better. <laughs> the intrinsic factor is made in this mucosa. If your mucosa is unhealthy, if you don't have enough acid making, this enzymes making in the mucosa of your stomach. B12 is not absorbed. If I take B12 in a melting tablet and it goes in my mouth, it comes through the, ah, how do you say that? Well, it comes I'll through your I'll cheeks, comes through your cheeks uh, directly in your system. It, so eating it will not help. So um, now, people who have lack of B12 never buy these tablets to eat. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Just take, take, take. <coughs> so I don't think I'll be using it. Maybe you know the name in English. For what? When it's absorbed through your mouth. Well, from my understanding, when, when you take something sublingually, like drops under your tongue, you have a higher bioavailability, which means that more percent of the nutrients that you take are landing in your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and because also... Because your, your gastric system, um, the acid and all the digestive juices, they destroy some of the... Yeah. The yeah. And maybe you have some, uh, some glue, you know, some bad... Oh, some yeah. bad yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's absorbed. mixed up in the rest of your fibers and rubbish that's in your intestines for you know the whole life you have that never came out but it still passes through your hepatic system right when you take it yeah it's supposed to come like inside your bloodstream more direct but i never yeah. really investigated how exactly but i know it works because with herbs it works the same like diluted you just comes in your system like right away so it's faster in your bloodstream, yes basically. and so more of it is actually yeah. being used but that doesn't mean you, you still have to have your cell, like your your electrolytes enough in and out the cell to have the potency difference to make nutrients come in and out. And you have to have a clean lymph system to get rubbish away and to get like nutrients from your blood inside the cell. So you still have to have all of that working in the end. So even B12, like that, it's not solving all the problems. It's just one little part of you that's not really functioning. You add it, but it doesn't. And I don't recommend these uh, shots they give in the arm at all for B12 ever. The body needs to maintain its balance. And if you put such a gigantic amount of whatever it is, just like that in the body, it, it just gets disrupted. It's too much. 
So if you're dying, yes, do it. But if you're not dying, and you know, find another way. <laughs> yeah. Answer the question. Okay. Uh, I can see the doctor tell yeah. or told her she should take uh, this stuff but actually she, she, she forgot about that but then she uh, bought it mm -hmm. and actually it's liquid and oily. okay so if you get it Okay, if you ever want to buy it, buy one that is methyl um, cobalamine. Methyl cobalamine. Yeah. Or adenosyl combination with adenosyl. No, you have to say what you want. You must say. And make sure no additives, no strange things. <coughs> I saw in the pharmacy in the Netherlands, regular B12, yeah. it's got cyanocobalamin. Who knows what is cyanide? What is cyano? What? Why would you want to eat that? It's never good. That's never good for you. And the, it's a salt, and the salt has a plus and a minus, and this one, is a salt cyanocobalamin is so strong the body cannot cut it open and use the cobalamine so it's useless so you buy it you got additives in this pill why you buy it it cannot do anything with it it's not helping so you waste your money so if you want <laughs> specific <laughs> brands, I have a few. Yeah, what, what, uh, can you repeat it? The, the two you said you could buy. Methylcobalamin. M-E-T-A-Y-L. Methylcobalamin. Cobalamine is the name of, that's the part of the B12 that usually is lacking. And the yes. second and one? And the second one is um, adenosyl. Adenosyl. And that is a, com so when it is adenosyl, it's always a little bit, like 10% with methyl. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, okay. I investigate also the energetic values of those and uh, uh, so. <laughs> I know too much, Eric. <laughs> Not too much. Thinking, oh, no, I, okay. <laughs> we never know enough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you ask another yeah. For to understand um, what school he goes to. So you say he doesn't really go to any school, his own school, but do you yeah. have like a s system that you're registered to that gives you books and stuff for him? Or okay, um, the niece of my mom created the reading course that is used in 95% of the schools in the Netherlands. So we went there, she gave us a, a, a mini course of uh, three hours and we got everything. <laughs> Um, I am a teacher in secondary school, so there are some basics I learned in the teacher school that I sometimes apply. Um, so that's what we get. We just bring him to fruit fest, to museums. We drop him three months in a German family, three months in a 
you know, like in an English country, Perfect. we take him to, in America, three months, we took him to all these uh, natural parks, they have these rangers, you can ask them anything, they do classes with the school board and they show you things, super interesting, even things that I don't remember. So, yeah, he likes it. Now, this lady is teaching him to be calm and come into his inner self. And he's painting and he wants to paint the next day. He never paints. Like, he's now learning from her how to, like, express that. So, we bring him to, we went to a synagogue. There was a synagogue and there was somebody saying like super interesting things and explaining what that is about their about their culture and their belief there was coming an imam there to talk about their belief and to compare the two it was in new york city and we just got invited by somebody said come to my synagogue it's about an hour you want to join it's about this topic about the differences and the equalities yes we come we come kian comes we sit we stay there for an hour. I think it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. So, um, Very cool. I can give you more examples of the last uh, years. I think even playing with Tessa, you know, it's working. Tessa learns more English, Guillaume learns more French. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's how we school. And sometimes there are signs when you walk. There are signs about plants, about the animals, about the fish. Yeah. Oh, we read yeah. what it says. Yeah. And yeah. We were lucky because Kian was a book fan from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So he loves books. He just books, books, books. I cannot get him enough books. So if we are somewhere where we have nothing to do and it's raining, you go in the library, <laughs> you put him in the child department, I go in the interesting adult apartment, you let him sit there, he's fine. <laughs> <lacht> und von wegen loben wir hier Österreicher die Maria Therese, denn die hat er schuldlich eingeführt und seitdem läuft alles bestens, oder? What do you say? And actually, we people, Austrian people, we thank uh, uh, Maria Therese because she was the queen that introduced that all the kids should go to school and yeah. Well, it's a school, so. I ask him sometimes when we pass the school with all the desks, he should be now in his second year sitting at the desk all the day. And he's like, oh no, he doesn't want to sit. In, look him running, he doesn't want to sit in the desk. He likes running and climbing. Yesterday he made the fire. I explained him the fire and how the air goes up and you know, oxygen and all of that. That's uh, physics I'm supposed to teach to second year of secondary school. I'll just tell it to him. Maybe he'll remember. He can make raw vegan pizza, raw vegan sushi. He makes his own salads. He, he says specifically what he wants, how it must be cut, how big. He can take yep. a knife since he's three he's and make his own food. So people say, oh, he's eight, he has a big knife. I say, yeah, he can cut since he's three because, you know, as long as he doesn't cut his fingers, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so. Kion, do you want to say something about your school, how you no. learn? No. No. <laughs> Actually, I didn't learn it on school. Ah, that's interesting. I want to know. <laughs> uh, Kion went to democratic school just the last two months. And he was, last year, he was three weeks in the democratic school when he was... What is that? Democratic school is like Sudbury Valley. Okay, doesn't say you anything about sociocracy doesn't say you anything neither uh, yeah, a little bit. it's a place where children's intrinsic motivation is valued above a lot of others there are rules in the school but a four-year-old can say something about this rule just as much as the parent or a teacher or the director so it doesn't mean the kids get what he wants but his voice is always 
happy to join the, the meeting circle. You can make an argument, basically. You can just, if he wants to run in the hallway, and the rule is no running in the hallway, he can go to the meeting and say, I want to run in the hallway because I like running. And then somebody else can say, well, we don't like it because children slip, they fall. Sometimes somebody comes over the corner, it's dangerous. We prefer to run outside. So the child can always say something and it can feel heard. And it gives the other people the opportunity, also kids who asked it last year or three years ago, to tell this kid, like, you know, it's dangerous, so we didn't do it. And they'll go like, ah. So the other children get an opportunity to share their experience with younger children. And they learn from that, and then the child accepts it. Oh, and they understand why, not just no running in hallway, no, or you get punished. And if a six-year-old says it to a four-year-old, that's super cool because then the four-year-old's gonna go like, okay. Just wait till she answers the question. Is that answer your question? Uh, Raphael and uh, Sophie? Right? No? Yeah, it's just a comment. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm in a position where I grew up with, with church life, Adventist church life, and basically Adventist church life is all um, voluntary work. So people only work there if they want to, and also all the, all the offices, they only are given to those people who want to have it and who are voted for it. So it's all a bit of a free will kind of system. Okay. And it actually sounds a little bit similar to yeah. sociocracy. Yeah. yeah. Well, Maybe sociocracy not has, kids, it's not really my favorite. It's not, it's not like I have sociocracy on the top of my list, but from all the schools there are, this is the best one I could find. Yeah. <laughs> and sociocracy it's, can be, the way they set it up, it can be a very time consuming process there in yes. which never is there a decision yeah. and nobody's happy. Yes. It can happen like that. So. Mm -hmm. But for a school it's good. Yeah, one, one fundament of uh, Adventist education that Ellen White said, true education is to bring children to take their own decisions. Mm. Mm. And if possible, the right decision, and I'm quote by it. Yeah. And that's, that's true, you know, when you have that. There's just one thing, maybe, um, I like also the Japanese model where kids learn to behave socially, because that's the problem we have with homeschooling, and a lot of children there, they're no good in the social interaction. Yeah, <laughs> well, you can, I can give you the report. His, uh, okay. his responsible wrote uh, 30 of July, in which he write that he's one of the most, children that wants to learn the most are most curious and is extremely social <laughs> and makes friends super fast. That she wrote that he sees very well when his behavior is accepted or not and that he's able to adjust his behavior and also even come up for his behavior why he does it. And I think to get that on a report as an eight-year-old is a compliment. <laughs> I feel really proud as a mom doing nothing. <laughs> you know, basically, this is lazy schooling in a way. It is a practice of letting go a lot. And the school has more rules now and it has a not so good social... Uh, how do you say not so good? Uh, how do you say that? There's no, there's not, that's not the wrong word. There's not so much control. Sometimes it's very good, but it has a downside that sometimes children go behind and they do things that are not good and they know it and nobody's there to see it. And then afterwards there's a fight and nobody of the adults know what actually happened. That happens. <laughs> But I guess it's normal in schools, it always happens like that, and maybe, uh, you know, I don't know. Kian, what do you think about do? Hmm. They want to know what it is. If you feel okay. It's okay, that's fine. Do you have friends? <laughs> A lot. A lot? Do you prefer school or, or going to food fest and travel and do things? Yeah. yeah, of course, yeah. So I think he's almost ready. So how about we take you to a school where you learn things like reading?
So yeah. tell me what, so the first, in the beginning was funny when we left, he was five and I asked him, what is school? What is school? It's a? It's a play school. You ask, I asked you in Dutch, will you in Nederlands say what is a school? So the last time when he was five, when he left, we asked, what is school? He said, school is a place where you are with your friends, where you can play all day and have fun. <laughs> and people then asked him, what do you learn? Or just by play. <laughs> and I think that is the best summary. <laughs> So he wants to go to a place with children that have fun and we went to a homeschooling uh, group last week with international homeschooling group and this group, for him it's school. It's, just, it's school for him, homeschooling group, because there are children, they're different ages, they speak different languages, they play, they learn from each other a lot. So it's school and if a 12-year-old wants to read a story and the 8-year-old wants to listen, but the parents are free. Yeah. Excellent. Thank enough. you for sharing okay. uh, your experience. Before Wendy. Wendy, we have you today. Well, if, if, you, if, if it's valuable for everybody and yes. people are happy, I am happy. Of course. I mean, I, I, I learned from this. I learned that I know a lot. And I did a lot. <laughs> so. <laughs>